Okay, the KKT conditions. Super useful, super important, super cool. All right, so when you're doing unconstrained minimization with convex differentiable functions, you'd normally what? You take a derivative, set it equal to zero, right? So you take a gradient, set it equal to zero, solve for the minimum, be done. That's almost exactly the same as what you do for constrained um, optimization, convex optimization problems. So here, instead of just saying set the gradient equal to zero, you check the KKT conditions. All right, so the very first KKD condition is it, it has kind of the look and feel of taking a derivative and setting it equal to zero. So what you do is you take the gradient of the Lagrangian with respect to x, and you, you, you have three sets of terms, right? You have, taking, you have the objective f of x, you take the gradient of that, and then you have all the terms from the constraints. And these terms have to act opposite to each other. They, they, when you add all those things up, they better equal to zero. And the way you want to think about it is that the, the gradient of the objective has to act like opposite and equal to the gradient of the constraints. These guys have to hit each other head on because if they don't, then you, know, you could think about, like let's say that the constraints are at, an, at kind of a strange angle compared to the objective. Then you could think about creeping up that constraint and finding a better objective value. So the only way that you can't do that is when the, con the constraint is, in, is, is kind of in opposite directions as, um, as that gradient of that, of that objective, okay? So that's the first KKT condition, the Grangian stationarity. So think of, again, the gradient of the objective equal and opposite to the gradient of the constraints. The second KKT condition is called complementary slackness. And this one is this one's really cool. And this says that if strong duality holds, then for each one of those G constraints, then um, alpha i g i of you know alpha i star g i of x star equals zero. Okay, so what that what does that mean? So g i has to be less than or equal to zero, and the alphas have to be greater than or equal to zero. So what that means is that hmm, so that means either alpha or g is zero, right, all the time at the solution. So let, let's prove it, okay? So let's suppose that strong duality holds. So here again, um, P star equals to D star. And I'll just, you know, by definition, D star is the best value of the dual objective. So it's the value of the objective at alpha star beta star, which is the optimal solution. And then I'm just rewriting the, just using the definition of the dual objective there, which is the min over X of the Lagrangian. And then here, um, on the previous line, I said it was the min over x, and so here I'm picking a specific x. So I'm going up, right? Because the min is always less than any particular value of x, and in particular, x star. And then here, I had a specific value of alpha beta, which was like alpha star beta star. And so I can always go up by taking the max with respect to alpha and beta, right? As long as I stay feasible, like alpha has to be non-negative. And then, um, very in one of the very early videos, in the first video, uh, I showed that the maximum of the Lagrangian with respect to alpha and beta equals the primal objective. So that's what that first equality is on the bottom line. And then, um, because of the primal objective, right? The primal objective is just f of x plus some stuff that's always zero when the constraints are satisfied. So. That, the, that stuff is zero, and then you get f of x star there. And then f of x star is equal to p star by the definition of p star. It's, it's the, the minimum over all f when the constraints are satisfied. So that's what all that stuff is. And the, then since we have p star less than or equal to p star, then everything in here has to be equal to each other. They're all equal, okay? Everything is equal. They're all equalities. Cool, so I'm just gonna keep some of those things up there. And um, in particular, what we have is that the Lagrangian, which is on that second line, is equal to f of x star, which is all the way on the bottom. So I'm just pulling that up and I put that up on that top line. So the Lagrangian equals f star. And now what that means 
is that all of that stuff equals zero. All of it. Okay, now what? Where do we go from here? Now, since x star is primal feasible, all of those x's are zero because all the primal constraints say hi of x has to be equal to zero. That's that those are feasible solutions. So all those terms are zero. We don't need to worry about those. So what about the other terms, the alpha g terms? Now, since x star is primal feasible, okay, um, and since each of the alphas are, so x star being primal feasible, of course, mean, means that the gi's are less than or equal to zero. And then each of the alphas are greater than or equal to zero. That means you've got something less than or equal to zero times something greater than or equal to zero. You're adding them all up. All of those terms, none of them can be, none of them can be positive. They all have to be, you know, non-negative. Or sorry, all they all have to be non-positive. They're all like, you know, something less than or equal to zero times something greater than or equal to zero. And because you're adding all these things up, they all just have to be zero, right? They're all just all of them have to be zero. Okay, so what that means is that either alpha is zero or g is zero. At least one of them has to be zero. So if alpha is not zero, if alpha is positive, that means g better be zero. And if g is negative, then alpha better be zero. Okay, there's no other way around it. Now, these two types of constraints, uh, sorry, these two, type, these two circumstances have different names. And the first one these are constraints called active constraints. If gi of x equals zero, that means that constraint is hitting at equality, right? It's not gi less than zero, it's gi less than or equal to zero. And if it hits that equality, it's called an active constraint. The constraint is doing something. Uh, and these are also called binding constraints. And in, in support vector machines, these are called support vectors, okay? So the support vectors are the ones that have binding constraints that have active constraints. Okay, so that is the KKT condition called complementary slackness. Okay, so this is the full list of KKT conditions. All right, so let's go through them. So primal feasibility, which we already know that the GIs have to be less than or equal to zero. We That was on the very first slide of the very first lecture here and H, HI of X is zero, right? This, this is part of the definition of the problem, okay? so. And then dual feasibility means the alphas have to be greater than or equal to zero because then otherwise, again, the Lagrangian wouldn't be a lower bound for the primal objective. And then we have complementary slackness where either alpha or G is zero. And then Lagrang um, Lagrangian stationarity, which is that it's, it's the same thing as like the, um, the setting the gradients equal to zero where um, the force is kind of the the forces of the objective have to be kind of equal and opposite to those of the constraints. And if all those things are true, then X star is primal optimal and alpha star beta star is dual optimal. And furthermore, if strong duality holds, then all of these guys have to satisfy all these conditions. You don't get to pick and choose, you gotta satisfy all of them. Okay, that's it, thank you.